All right. Thank you, Zach, um, and thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, everyone that's been putting this together really appreciates it uh, to see everyone here today. And it's going to be fun to show you everything that we've been, you know, working on for the last year to, to get Nano out there. Um, yep, as we said, I am going to give you a little bit of a, an intro and an overview of what we're trying to do with Nano uh, for the people that are maybe just a little familiar with it, and then um, what our main focuses are. So starting from the top level, we always have to define what problems we're solving. Um, and the main three focus areas that we are looking at is ultra-fast, fee-less, and open access. And those are the three properties that we really need in order to make efficient currency, to be a transfer of value, which is what our primary focus is. Um, and people that are familiar with other cryptocurrencies know that these properties aren't always satisfied either. It takes a long time for your transaction to complete. Sometimes uh, fees exceed how much money you're transacting um, or, or they're closed systems. And none of those things are very good if we're going to use it as a currency. Other things that we're trying to do are removing centralization forces um, by design. So we, we want our system to be an open protocol. We don't want it to be monopolized by a single group or a single area geographically. We want it to be open and it needs to be designed in a way so that it can't be um, brought into one, into one group's control. So fearlessness is one part of that. There isn't mining, there aren't large uh, factories of doing cryptocurrency mining. Most people are familiar with that, uh, with other cryptocurrencies. Um, so that was one of our design goals, was to remove that. We have a distribution method that we th felt was a very fair way of dis distributing it. It went to people all over the world through a, fee a free faucet. I'll elaborate on that a little bit more. But we didn't want it to go to just a few people. We wanted it to be evenly spread out as much as possible. And the final goal was low resource usage. Uh, people, typically through the news, the news likes to report you know, the, the worst things in, in whatever the new technology is. So they, they kind of hammer on the energy usage of um, other cryptocurrencies. And it, it's not a good thing to have out there. Uh, we want it to be as light and as, as green as possible. So low resource usage, eliminating that problem was another one of our initial design goals. Yeah, so this is our faucet. Um, a lot of people don't know that Nano was never an ICO. We, we didn't sell any of the coins out there when we uh, initially put them out. They were given out for free to, uh, to people that were interested. And we used Google Captcha in order to distribute it. You know, you click on the thing, I'm not a robot, solve a little bit of a puzzle, and people would get Nano based on solving that. And we actually ran that for two years. And um, we had a, a very large distribution over areas uh, where people don't have a high income, you know, in Indonesia, South America, um, Venezuela. We had a lot of interest in there. So we got a really big distribution of Nano um, by, by using that method, rather than something like mining where only people that have computers or possibly specialized hardware could do it. Um, that was one of our goals, and that, that, actually, that worked out pretty well. And then, um, yep, geo, it's geographically spread out. Lots of people all over the world have it, and we're, we're fully distributed uh, as far as the supply. So the circulating supply is the final supply. There's no more inflation going out like there are um, with some other systems. So a little bit of the internals about how Nano, Nano works. The biggest thing that we changed internally from a tech perspective is we use voting-based consensus. This is instead of using uh, electricity or energy consumption-based consensus. And this, this does two things. One, it's, it's our low resource usage, so it's eco-friendly because the votes are just um, network packets, this is data being sent out. But also this is what really gives us our fast confirmation times. Uh, when the votes go out, they go out, out at the speed of uh, internet latency, and as soon as they're counted and tabulated, the consensus is confirmed. And that's why our confirmation times are, are sub, sub one second. Um, and it's also, it also works on a, a long term, it, it decentralizes it because not all of the um, consensus generating activities in a single building or by a single um, company. It can be done by anyone, anywhere, just by moving your vote weight around. This is a little diagram, a kind of a visualization of how our transactions work. So 
with the nano on the left, we have um, one little, all those little lines represent accounts. And every time they do a transaction, it's a dot on the line. And it's the edge goes over to where the recipient is. And this is how we can get a lot of speed by all the, all the um, accounts operating independently. When you compare it to something like a, tra a traditional blockchain on the right, every transaction has to get packed into that one area that's being generated out there. And it takes a little bit of time to do that. It, so it can take between two minutes, 10 minutes, or maybe longer in order for that to happen. Um, so splitting things up horizontally in one per account is the other factor besides voting that gives us really, really high speed. So this is what we um, have been working on so far up to date, and then we'll, I'll go over a little bit about what we're going to be working on. Um, we're, it's constantly evolving, our, our protocol. A lot of these things are kind of technical parts, but they're all focused on improving efficiency, reducing network usage, increasing the speed at which things um, operate. Um, we just put in dynamic proof of work. That's a, a quality of service mechanism, making sure that normal users get priority in um, sending their transactions out as opposed to people that are just sending out lots of transactions. And then we've also um, are working on a, a couple new things. We're working on a, a memory bound proof of work. Do, we've been doing research into that for the last uh, few months and we're making good uh, headway there. Layered voting, so not everyone in the networks needs to see all of the vote traffic going on and that'll be um, really good for end users that want to run nodes but don't, don't really need to see all the intermediate vote traffic that's going out, which in the end means more transactions can go through the network. And then a trimmed ledger, which just reduces network use or, or um, it reduces disk usage as time goes on. Um, so that's what we've been working on. Uh, and we're going to start going through a couple presentations here that show you um, everything that we've been working on. And I think I'm going to be talking with Eva here really quick. So um, thank you. Thank you guys for coming.